or how about this? You're upright and you have an injury, and it goes, ow, ow, ow. And your head just goes farther forward over a period of a decade. Probably makes sense for my right. jaw doing that. And that's what causes the jaw to jam and causes the jaw to click. You got it. But it's, it's from your head being forward that's causing these jaw issues. I will tell you that um, after the neck work you just did, mm -hmm. easier to breathe. I can breathe a lot better out of my uh, yeah, cool. sinuses, and the jaw feels a lot looser. Yeah. The candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long. It doesn't make it a diseased candle. <laughs> oh, oh my God! God. Oh my. Are you feeling something down your legs or in your lower back? Yeah, I think the lower, my lower back especially, I feel like is a big source of my uh, troubles. Um, okay. In my glutes, I have a, a, like what I would describe as like a misfiring, okay. almost of, of some of the muscles, and um, like I feel like tendons popping or like mm -hmm. a, lots of popping and clicking uh, that travels all through my lower extremities and into my upper as well. I'll give you the answers in a second. I'm just curious what they told you was kind of the explanation. Did they give you an idea of what was causing that or just kind of... No. When you're dealing with that kind of electrical and then muscle is the nerves are irritated in your lower back. So the muscles are tasered by the nerves that leave your lower back. That's how they are controlled. And so that sensation down your leg is because something is occupying this space around the nerve. Most likely at your age, we're dealing with disc. You know, there's a disc injury. And so taking an x-ray is a big disservice to you mm -hmm. to take an x-ray because you can't really see the disc yeah. on x-ray you just see the space but many times you can have a swollen disc at your age and the disc space actually look really good on x-ray so your x-rays might just show like you know things are going to be a little out of position hip height stuff like that which is evidence of your body trying to relieve pressure but it doesn't give you an idea of what really is causing my symptom which is should be the first thing out of the chiropractor's mouth you have a disc injury and because the discs have no feeling we don't have a good connection with the disc at a young age of how to take care of them, like our enamel on our teeth. You know, you can't really trust how it feels. Tell me about some of the other things you're feeling. Is it just, just down the legs, both legs, or just that left leg? I would say it's, it's really in my, my full body. Like, I, I picture the four quadrants of my body, and I just don't feel a whole lot of, uh, like, mental connection to uh, the different quadrants, especially in upper right, lower right, and now, uh, recently it's been moving into the, the left side as well not so much the upper left this is all pretty good in this okay. region but um, I feel it uh, similar stuff that's been going on on the right side with yes. um, it, you know it started with the glute and lower lower back uh, dysfunction I guess right. and spreading all the way down into my knee and ankle and now I'm starting to notice that on the left side as well. Do you have that same kind of sensation down your arms that you feel down your legs or? I do in the right side, the left, the, all no. good, yeah. Um, but I also tore my labrum in high school. Um, and so I have some compensation going on here in the right side. Um, and I feel like in my back, in this area, I definitely feel okay. like something similar that I feel in my, my hip. Kind of tingles in there? Uh, yeah, tingles and, and it's like um, almost like a muscle weakness uh -huh. or of some type. I also feel it in my abs on the right side as well. Okay. So there's something going on. The nerves that come out of there, so you have the joint in your middle back and then the nerve radiates around to the front. So you most likely have an injury in there that's causing the joint to be upset and then the joint is in really close proximity to the nerve, right? So you have the nerve is, <laughs> if that's an injury, that'll give you that local pain pressure that you can point your, it's right there at. Mm. And when you hit the nerve, you don't necessarily feel it right next to it. You'll feel it where the nerve ends, which is going to be around at the front. So we have an injury in your middle back. That injury probably predates the lower back even. Now it, it's hard as a patient to know when these things happen, but generally what I find is that the middle back has the youngest injuries, and then we have the compensatory injury down your legs. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing I can see when you're, when you're sitting here. Go ahead and stand up. I'll look at you standing. Look straight forward. Yeah. So... You're fine, you just relax, show me center, you're good. We're dealing with it, gosh, at least almost three inches of head forward, head posture. So the head is translated, with me for a second, your head is translated forward three inches. Part of that is avoidance. The front part of our spine has less feeling, the back has a lot of feeling, so your body just, there we go. <laughs> or how about this, you're upright and you have an injury and it goes, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> and your head just goes farther forward over a period of a decade 
to get out of pain. Yeah. It's a way to, you know, and I, my neck doesn't hurt per se. I have this sensation down my arm, uh, but my neck feels fine. Well, it isn't fine. It's because you're in avoidance. And the nerve pressure is happening because of the continual stress on the disc in your neck because of that posture. So it's hard to feel it because when you bend forward, I want you to watch the thing. When your head goes forward, I'm just going to use the lower back just for illustration purpose, the hole gets bigger when you round forward. And so part of what's happening is as your head goes forward, it opens up the hole, but there's more pressure on that disc that causes the disc to further rupture. The head weighs about 10 pounds. Every inch the head goes forward, it doubles in weight. So in terms of what the muscles and discs are feeling. So 10, 20, 40, 80. Your muscles are like an engine idling at a high engine RPM and not idling at 600 or going at 5,000. And so we need to turn down the idle screw. <laughs> we got to get your head back to take the muscular stress. I'm sure you get a lot of, you know, yeah. muscular stress in your traps. Ultimately, that can affect your organs, your sympathetic, your lungs. It's harder to breathe. <laughs> you know, the more forward your head goes, you know, it's hard to get a deep inhalation. You know, bring your head back. It's go ahead and try. Bring your head back and then try a deep breath in. You notice that, I mean, it's, it's just easier to breathe. Yeah, I, I've been to many chiropractors and I, I just haven't had a whole lot of success. Um, I, I very much like to be like engaged and learning as much as yeah. I can while I'm going through the process. And I, um, I don't feel like I've really found that yet. Okay, so. Let me have, let me have you, just start on your back for me. Sure. I want you to take one deep breath in for me. Head back for me, let all the air out. <sighs> Beautiful, deep breath in. Let the jaw relax, no sound, just let the air out. There you go, let the air out, there you go. Beautiful. Deep breath. Let the jaw relax, open. Let the air out, there you go. Yeah, we'll tighten it there, yeah. So, notice the upper, upper back there, pretty resistant. We gotta get that moving better. Yeah. So, on your side, deep breath in. Exhale. Uh, breathe in deep for me. Try to relax, try to twist. I got you. Uh -huh. Last side for me, good. Uh -huh. Exhale. There we go. I got you. It's okay. Uh -huh. Breathe. Exhale. There we go. Let's go face up for me. It's okay. Face up. All right. Let me just see where your neck is here. So feel that your SCMs, your sternocleidomastoids, are in constant tension. Do you feel that? <laughs> These muscles are just, even when you're laying down, there's no gravity on your spine, but. <laughs> Probably makes sense for me. Right, jaw doing that. and that's what causes the jaw to jam and causes the jaw to click. You got it, but it's, it's from your head being forward that's causing these jaw issues. The more forward your head goes, the more the jaw is jammed. Jaw issues and neck issues are the same thing. You have to get the head back to take the stress off the TMJ. It's okay. There you go. There you go. Mm. There you go. <laughs> Did great. Mm -hmm. Let me have this side. Okay, all right. There you go. Cool. <laughs> Did great. So even even adjusting that joint will cause a reflexive relaxation. Any muscle that the nerves that come out of that joint control. So even a lot of that tension now is released in your SCM, but in the surrounding muscles here, they're going to start calming down. The end effect is two things. We need the curve in your neck, and we need your ear over your shoulders. There are nerdier, believe it or not, chiropractors than me that <laughs> all they care about is getting your ear over your shoulder. There's really not much, what do we say, conversation about why there's a symptom. Does that make sense? But your posture's not correct. Mm -hmm. It takes time to make your posture incorrect. It takes time to undo it. The same way we arrived is how we're going to leave. <laughs> it was stretching. Whatever position your body's in for the most amount of time is where your body's going to want to be. So we have to start getting your neck used to being in the right position. Initially, it's going to feel very foreign and, you know, uncomfortable. Uh, and as we progress through your care, hey, Ed, I can't believe this was used to be uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it just seemed like home now. But initially, a lot of the, the positions that I'm going to hold you in feel, or feel unnatural, um, even though they're actually where you used to be when you were young and we've sort of prodigal away from home. Well, I welcome it. All right, we're going to get you. We'll get you. We'll get you. But mm -hmm. part of it is... In order to do it safely, we need to make sure we have every part of your neck and back working so that we have an even participation. So when you bring your body back upright, we don't just make the loose ones do it, we make the stiff ones do as much as possible. 
and that's why I'm spending so much time up here on your upper neck. I want this area. There we go. And most everything in life is, is, is forwardly cantered. I mean, we have to start getting used to having our head back. There we go. Okay. Do you have any sinus issues or headache issues there? I do have some sinus um, troubles. I had a uh, a turbinate reduction surgery back in, in June, not this most recent June, but last June because I was just constantly having so much like congestion mm -hmm. and pressure mm -hmm. in my uh, sinuses and even ears and you know jaw, all of that. And I think I'm connecting the dots for you, right? That's, that's because your head's three inches forward. Yeah, right? Right? So the, the tissue drains down your neck. The lymphatics that drain your sinuses, that drain the tissue around the turbinates, you understand they all go down your neck the head being forward causes such tightness in your neck that it crimps those drain lines so you're going to have a backup you're going to have an overflow up the volcano <laughs> out the top and and you're right we can go in there and operate but you know why do we even have turbinates do you know do, 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 do why we have those things it's like allergies i guess like they're supposed to react i, I don't really know it's okay i'm gonna give you all the answers today <laughs> what, what the heck are turbinates they're parts of your nasal passages that increase surface area it's like how your brain has lots of folds in it Right, so what, the reason why our brain has lots of folds and a manatee's brain looks like a bowling ball <laughs> is because the more folds generally gives you more surface area, which is a higher level of intelligence. Same thing with your nasal passages. For humidifying the air, we have all these folds in there. The turbinates are those kind of valleys and sulci that allow for more air to be humidified for oxygen carbon dioxide exchange in your lungs. Again, <laughs> just we you know reduce reduce them or they get inflamed because there's a lot of you know it, it, like the, there's inflammation around there that builds up they get swollen and you can't breathe, but they have a purpose. <laughs> I feel like nobody you know they humidify your air so that you can have good oxygen carbon dioxide exchange. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, that surgery really didn't do anything to to help with that uh, congestion and inflammation. If you just Google. Neck lymphatic drainage. You should be able to just. That's <laughs> right. Look at all the lines that go down the neck. You know, there are tons of lymph nodes in here. Part of what I'm feeling on the left side is all these lymph nodes. These are all. Does that make sense? All these little tiny little balls in here in your neck. They're evidence of congestion um, that drain the tonsils, that drain the sinuses. I also get the uh, the post nasal drip. So it's also overflow. Yeah, exactly. Just overflow. It's all. <laughs> I'm sorry nobody connected the dots that, you know, it took time for your head to get three inches forward and it takes time to undo it. Now, we're, it's going to be a diminishing returns curve. So I can get your head from three inches forward to an inch and a half forward in three months, right? <laughs> and then from an inch and a half forward to one inch forward takes six months, mm -hmm. right? And then one inch forward to a half inch forward takes a year, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's harder and harder to get it. But we can get a huge reduction in symptoms very quickly um, with that level of forward head posture. It's just... That, like I said, that last little bit takes a longer time, but it's, we have to hold you way back here. There are reasons that your neck has gone forward. I'm just going to see the jaw here a little bit. So the two muscles that mainly cause a lot of the inflammation around the TMJ is the masseter right here, and then you have temporalis. And so you can release these. Sometimes you can go in the mouth. I'm not... No thanks. <laughs> Put my glove on me. You can release most of the masseter. There is the pterygoid muscle on the inside, but mainly right here, just working this masseter right here. Is, but again, all of this is subservient to the head being forward. The tension here comes from the posture. So while you can reduce some symptoms temporarily by working on this, it's it's not my. Not you're just playing around. You're just, right. You need to get the head back. That's primary. Kind of make, that's yep, where it's yep, all happening. That's yeah. where you make the contact and release that. It's a cable that's way too tight. You gotta, like I said, just circular massage, press, kind of find that trigger point, release it.
need oxygen to contract the muscle. You also need oxygen to relax the muscle. So when you get really tight muscles, they won't just self-resolve. You have to drive blood, oxygen in the blood to the tissue to get it to release. What did they tell you about the labrum? What was the what was the training they gave you? What is the labrum and what does it do? Or what's the? You know, I'm just curious. About, I'm always curious if anybody gets taught anything. Or it's okay to say I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a fine answer. Like I have no idea. What I'm just curious if they teach it. I could tell you how I entered it, but okay. um, I would I would love to hear. Okay, the labrum is the outer lip. So the glenoid fossa, most of the cartilage is in the middle. So your humerus sits in that cup in the middle of your glenoid fossa of your scapula. The labrum is the lip. There's not very much cartilage on the lip to begin with. It's about maybe a millimeter thick when you're, you know, born. And this is like, you know, 10 millimeters thick. It's thicker in the middle. So when you pivot your shoulder forward, you're using your shoulder on the thin part of the cartilage. The alignment of your shoulder determines the ability to injure the labrum. So I'm trying to say the shoulders being rounded forward and your forward head posture made tearing the labrum possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were set up for it. Nobody connected the dots. Like, look, it's like if I leave something like, all right, see you later. You know, like, okay, anybody like bumps that's gonna it's gonna fall right over. It makes sense. You were set up for it. The position of the shoulder made it easy to tear the labrum. If you were pivoting your humerus primarily in the center of the lake, if you have a big yacht and you're going near a sandbar, you're gonna hit the bottom. You should have it in the channel where there's deeper waters. I will tell you that um, after the neck work you just did, mm -hmm. easier to breathe. I can breathe a lot better out of my uh, yeah, cool. sinuses, and the jaw feels a lot looser. Yeah, I gotta get rid of any inflammation back here so I can bring your head back into it. Yeah, right there. The atlas and axis up here have to be underworking to allow this whole chain of, you know, like a domino effect to occur. Sometimes you do have to go on into the front of the shoulder and release the tension here that holds the shoulder forward and then, like I said, the humerus on the labrum. The right side of your back is a lot more elevated over here. This is all, maybe you can feel the ribs are all elevated on your right. Right in here. All through the areas where I get a lot of symptoms. Yeah. And this is the side that was wrapping around to the front? Yeah. Yeah, yep. the right side. Yeah, this is at least a quarter inch, half inch, a little bit higher right here. It's elevated. This is more smooth. And then right here, there's an injury, a rib injury. What was your extracurriculars in high school? What was your... I played in high school uh, baseball and lacrosse. Uh, that's where I saw my injuries, okay. both those sports. Um, but I played just about every sport growing up, gotcha. as you can imagine. I got you. It's just, this is usually something running into you. I would imagine more lacrosse. <laughs> lacrosse is where the, uh, yeah. the real, uh, I subluxed my shoulder. Like, gotcha. like seven different times, actually. Jeez. And uh, really, I guess, stretched those uh, ligaments. And um, then in that area of my back that you're on right now, mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that I, I, like, tweaked my back several different times, mm -hmm. like, right in that area. And mm -hmm. I would have that injured feeling for, like... Twinge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a twinge for, like, a week mm -hmm. at a time. And I think that may have something to do with why it's... It's uh, not functioning properly now. Right, guarding. So you have an injury to the joint. You have two joints here on the right side. You have the facet between the two vertebrae, and then you have the rib that attaches to the side. A lot of knuckles in here. So when you jam or injure or inflame a joint, it's going to give you that local twinge, and then your body's going to try to guard it. It's going to try to stiffen it up, expecting another injury to happen <laughs> soon after. Mm -hmm. In terms of long-term, this area 
never gets operated on. It ends up being the first to shut down, and that leads to the accelerated aging of the nerves that go down your leg. Mm. So this is not independent of your lower back. This is the boss of your lower back. If this was working, this wouldn't happen. The leg symptoms can't happen with a functioning middle back. So teenage years, you're getting contact injuries, <laughs> twinges, injuries to your chest, your body rounds forward. Does that make sense? Your chest rounds to go into avoidance. The loss of your lumbar arch called your lordosis happens. That creates all the stress going to one or two segments at the bottom. And so your care is simply restoring the function of your middle back, telling these old injured areas that they're not allowed to be frozen anymore, which isn't going to be fun. Aging isn't abnormal. If you're 70 and your skin looks 70, it's like, well, yeah, you're 70. <laughs> Right, it's, it's accelerated aging is the problem. And they're labeling accelerated aging a disease. Um, it's not a disease, it's the candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long. It doesn't make it a diseased candle, mm -hmm. right? So you, you asked more from it. It's, it's got a certain amount of tread on the tire. You know, once you get to 60,000 miles, there's no more tread left. It's like, yep, that's... Sometimes when I press here, you might even feel it in your leg because this is really where it comes from. Right in here. This is where the congestion's been allowed to build up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, take a break. The alignment's not good on the left either, but it's softer. Can you notice that it's, <laughs> it doesn't have as much tightness as the right? The right is just a blockade over there. Yeah. This side at yeah. least probably functions. You know, I'm not saying it's like, like this is getting a C minus, this is getting an F. I'm not happy with either side. All right. <laughs> I'm just saying it's at least a better rating. Um, Generally, with this rib injury on the right, it would cause left lower abuse. So the right middle tightness, the left lower is what we call the ultimate compensatory injury. So left leg symptoms might have been the first thing that arrived. If, there was a, if I had to write like a history of your back, <laughs> oldest injury here, first appearance would be here, and then compensatory injury in the right, right leg kind of follows suit. It's just, a, it's just like reading a book. There's just chapters. And <laughs> this is where it goes. Probably nobody's really found this spot before. Is anybody deep tissue this area? Not like this. Not like this, okay. Sometimes they focus on the areas that hurt, you know, the hips or the, which we'll go down there in a second, but this is ultimately where most of the time should be spent. And also it's been mostly on that, on the right side because mm -hmm. that's the side that I've been right. commenting on right. mostly. I gotcha, okay. But, all right. These are just the roots. They're of course gonna feel very cable-y and ropey, but it's the it's just the attachments from your neck. Ultimately, the roots are all down here. Of course, they're going to be tight. So when you have a high level of bruising or soreness in here, it'll cause dysfunction to your viscera, to your organs. Sometimes those dots aren't connected, that back problems and organ problems are connected. So anyway, I just... I definitely feel like I have had some of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, this, this is your heart right here, the nerves that feed your heart. The cardiopulmonary nerve is on the left side of your upper back, so just you know, tension in here. The more forward the head goes, the more tension. You know, it'll lead to that, and then the world doesn't connect the dots for us that, oh, my head being forward is... <laughs> causing high blood pressure or 
causing me to feel lethargic because my thyroid's not working properly or oh I have gastric paresis because the nerves that go to your stomach come from a little bit lower right about here this is what leads me to the ultimate thing which is that your spinal health is your health it isn't a facet or piece of your health <laughs> having a healthy spine meaning it's in the right alignment there's no bruising there's no soreness anywhere there's no tightness that everything operates the way it was intended to operate and function the brain communicates to the body through these nerves there we go. I've been having uh, digestive problems for mm -hmm. a while now mm -hmm. and I have um, completely adjusted my my diet because of it like no gluten no dairy mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm really careful of the stuff that I consume mm -hmm. but it makes sense to me that um, you know probably a lot of the issues that I've been having are coming from my spine this is like dark this is old stuff in here that is so how the color of the mark will kind of represent how long it's been there sometimes it'll be more reddish or pinkish in color and then you have like a, what color do you think it is? It's like a, it looks like a purpley purpley gray black gray. almost it's like tells you that it's been there a while doing okay yeah okay if I'm going too hard just let me know say back off Ed no all good okay. just kind of make sure I'm breathing and oxygenating you're doing good, yeah, I'm doing good. There we go. Interested to know right versus left. C minus F, you know, <laughs> I'm not happy with either side. Both sides are not, I would give really great pass ratings. But yeah, there's definitely more on the rib over here. This is, this radiates around here. Right there, there's the kind of epicenter. There's a couple. Yeah, I comb everywhere and most places don't really change. <laughs> if there's nothing there, I can't make something appear. <laughs> it only draws out what's internal. And so very quickly in certain spots like here, here, it comes out real dark, real quick. This is what we were trying to ch check and adjust when you're on your side is this joint, right? That's the top of it. Right in there, I will tell you, I've had a ton of pain lately. Like. Um, I, I imagine like sciatic pain of some type. Yes, is that? Yeah. yeah. And um, it's been like almost miserable to walk on it even lately. Correct. Yes, we have we have a disc injury, and then the nerves radiate right through here. The joint here is stiff, which then causes bruising to accumulate. See, movement of the joint washes the joint because the joint's been stiff. <clears throat> that creates a congestion. Now the tissue's even more inflamed, dirty, <laughs> irritating the sciatic nerve further. And I notice it bounces back and forth a little bit from my left to my right. It's like, you know, it'll be hurt really bad on my left for a bit, then it'll suddenly go away, and a day or two later it'll be on my right. That's posture shifting. Yep, your body's trying to move the hot potato. <laughs> yep. It moves it over there for a little bit, burns that hand, moves it on the right hand, burns that hand. Irregardless, it's like you're, you're, that will only stop when there's no need, no reason for it to happen. It's all happening because your alignment's not correct. The lumbar lordosis, the curve that your lower back needs to have, is not there. So once I solve the posture, right. I should have better control over the muscles. Absolutely, yes, sir. That was so. Your brain communicates to these muscles through the nerves. You're getting false nerve irritation because the disc is hitting the nerve. So there's there's a blockade between your brain and your body. That's why you feel all these quadrants and systems not functioning right. You're like, I, I feel disconnected from my body, Ed. Yeah. Exactly. Correct. Because your spinal column's inflamed. Because your posture's not correct. Anyway. So just loosening this joint. You, gotta, you can't have any tenderness. I should be able to push as hard as I want 
on that joint, and you go, Ed, is that all you got? You, you little weenie man. <laughs> Not, oh, Ed, be careful. Right, right, right there? Yes, sir. That's the top of the joint. Right there. Mm. you got to release all of this. 24 vertebrae in the spinal column. Five have all surgery. Nobody talks about it. <laughs> it's the elephant in the room. And it's like Wizard of Oz. I'm pulling back the curtain. and <laughs> never, mind the, never mind the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Good. Yeah. All that on that rib on that side on your right. It's the right side, yeah. That's where all kind of. That was it. See how like, it's real dark there? Mm -hmm. There's like real dark marks. These are old cross injuries mm -hmm. <laughs> that have been, you know, and as your care progresses, I won't even be able to make any of these marks on your back. Let me have you go back. Uh, let's do face down again. All right, breathe in for me. There we go. Exhale, breathe. Breathe now. Huh? And exhale. Yep, you got it. And exhale. Oh, oh my God! Oh my! <laughs> Get the idea? Yeah. Gotta loosen this area up more. Breathe in deep. Exhale. <sighs> We're stretching for a second. We're just stretching. There we go. Breathe. Here we go. Beautiful. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah. That was probably not gonna come. Didn't you know? You couldn't hear it <laughs> audible from the outside, but inside you feel all that movement. I could hear it on the left side and feel it on the left side. Definitely. Yep. Yep, we gotta get all that in. Your toes. <laughs> all right. There we go. Uh oh. Oh, come on. Almost got five for five. Don't take my pinky off, Ed. <laughs> there we go. There we go, nice. Okay. Okay, good. Oh, it's a big toe on this one, the pinky toe. <laughs> no, not. I know, alright. Injured that one before? Huh? Have you injured these? Probably. Prob <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'm looking for mobility. I don't feel much separation here. There it is a little bit. There it moves. Even... They should just feel spongy, the joints when I move them. It's a bad thing a lot. A big one. Yeah, this is, mine does the same thing. It's just 10. The tightness of the tendon moving over a bone, it's not anything to be. Good, 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 good. Okay. Uh, is that no, just one. Yeah. Just like that. Yo. I'm going to have you tilt your head a little bit to the right for me. Tilt your head right, tilt your head right. A little bit, okay, another one. A little bit. Go ahead and tilt your head to the right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Funny feeling. Go ahead and tilt your head left for me. Tilt left. All right. Tilt that one. There we go. Tilt your head to the. Okay, it's good. This is where you know, eventually you even give me that. Give me that roller bar there. Give me that bar. Yeah. Uh, another bar. This. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know. Hold. <laughs> and you would stretch. Now that's too difficult, you're going to move your arms to different positions, but over time, you, we take this to whatever tolerance you can handle, and we go for the most amount of time. Okay. This is how you stretch the front part of your shoulder and retracting it back with the understanding that we're going to run into some monsters. If your hands start going numb, we're going to move it to a different position, but we're trying to take this for a minute or so, and then maybe if you have to move, but the longer as you do this type of stretch, the easier it'll become to do longer time. Okay, and then, yes, every minute you'll just sort of push with your feet and roll downward, so roll this way. That makes sense going down to those injuries in your middle back. Oh, yeah. Compressing them. I'm just going to test you out and see how difficult this is. Lift your head. There. Oh, too much? No. See if you can hang out there a little bit. So I have these books behind your head, and the idea is to go as deep as you can go without you getting really mad. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to ride the wave or ride the edge of... Like going to the gym, you want to go right to that edge of where you can about to ready to <laughs> collapse, and that's where you want to hang out without overwhelming you. I feel some tingling in my hands. Right, so this is what you do is you just let go of this, let go of this, then move your arm to the side, move 
over here. Yeah, let him just hang out there for a second. Pectoralis muscle is above the brachial plexus, which is the nerves that go down your arm. As you're stretching the pec, it's going to press down on the nerves underneath. Okay. As your pec doesn't isn't so tight and your shoulders don't want to be so forward, that will dissipate. Yeah, okay, well then you can go ahead and go back to it. And <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? It's going to be a journey. And it took me one minute before I felt tingly. Now I can go five minutes before it tingle feels tingly. You're saying it's going to, you'll get longer and longer with that. You're, if you're a boxer, you want your abdominals to be tight, but if you want to have your spine last as long as possible, you don't want your abdomen being tight all the time. You want it to be flexible and kind of like yoga, yeah. <laughs> you know, malleable. You know, like that drunken, you know, like <laughs> you want to be flexible. What do they call it? Isn't it like a, it's like a martial art thing where there's like the drunken guy or something? He's like, right, yeah, like, that's what yeah. you want. <laughs> he kind of bends with the reed and, you know, right? I don't know. You like it's, water. You like water. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up now, but I'm just saying you, you don't want to be a rigid bamboo stick. Where 